We were warned. The Hydra bot has attacked another hospital. We saw the signs. Hydrobot, taking it to the next level, that was sick. And now, when most think it's too late. 30 orphans, dead, lost at the hands of the Hydrobot. Humanity has one last hope. Tell me what you're really here to do. I'm here to announce Bulletstorm Full Clip. With no home to go back to. He came all the way from Poland to tell us this and nothing left to lose. I'm going to school you on how to protect your skin from irritation. He's got no mercy to offer. This is an over the top. I have an entire army at my command. What do you have? Skill shot, combos. Sebastian versus Hydrobot. Close shave. <clears throat> okay, so I don't often open up my talk about the Game Awards by goofing around because these videos are, you know, kind of a big deal in over 20 minutes, but this year didn't really give me too much content to work with. That's right, hold on to your hats, people. 2017 was the first ever Game Awards that I could call fully competent. Keeping up with my analogy from last year, the Game Awards is growing up. 2015 it was still a kid, 2016 it was awkward and teen, and this year it's a young adult and it's got one thing on its mind, business. There is so much freaking advertising in this show, it's taking away from the cringe and quirk moments. I almost miss it. Either way, this year's review gets a little bit less, hey look at this dub show, and gets more like a parent talking down to its child, because now that the goofier moments have cleared away, there's a few still existing elephants in the room that need to be addressed. Here we go. <clears throat> I won't bore you guys by talking about the dialogue Jeff and the almost humanoid awkward bot 2000 shared, mainly because if you were there, you'd know that Jeff did that job already. Good god, what a snore fest. Mainly, it was just reiterating what happened last year if you fell asleep during the Game Awards or had dishes to do or something, with a few announcements here and there for stuff that we already heard like last month happening to the Game Awards. Credit where credit is due though, he gave a great justification for best ongoing game. So best ongoing game is meant to reward the game creators that have continued to update their game with new content, patches, DLC, other things like that. He's right, gaming is changing and it's good for at least one aspect of the Game Awards to live in the present and accept that change. And it's also super important to reward those who put work into ongoing games and punish those who don't. He did really seem to shrug off the honest criticism that they don't present every award on stage though. Sometimes people online are always like, well you didn't present every award and it's like, I don't think we ever really want to present like every individual genre award, but we want to create different kinds of awards. Jeff, you created an award show, you must manage that award show. Last year, you gave the award for best independent game nonchalantly without listing the other nominees, and honestly, through all the hell I dragged you through the awards last year, that was probably the most unforgivable sin I found. Four independent games that took risks and self-published were overlooked last year. Each time you don't list the nominees for an award, there are implications for that. I tried really hard to paint you as the good guy last year, but if your response to that criticism is seriously, I don't think we want to, I strongly suggest you stop running the Game Awards so someone more understanding can take the role. Nothing else to note here besides the fact that they dedicated about a minute to defending PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds as a Game of the Year nominee. Props for knowing your audience and still being toned deaf to them. That takes some serious effort. <clears throat> oh my god, he looks like he's aged five years. We thought the army would crush them. Oh, that's some good studio work. I really like the echo of that recording booth. Or did you add it in post to make a commentary on how audio and video games has to always be awful for some reason? Oh boy, here I come. Finally, my chance to dang it. Oh, hey, we asked for this. Cool. <laughs> Gotta say, Jeff's improv skills are right up there with his ability to excuse himself for terrible practices in giving awards. And Dr. Disrespect as well. Uh, no hip twitch. Yeah, all right. Like, what was that sentence even supposed to be? Remember, Renee is a member of What's Good Games, a gaming show that is listed as one of the judges for the Game Awards. Can you say conflict of interest? Here, let me try. <clears throat> Andrea Renee, I don't care if this one is entirely fan voted. You can't have someone be both a judge and a nominee in the Game Awards. It's bad practice. That would be like if A&E did this special on the 100 most influential people of the past millennium and Spielberg not only somehow made it onto that list, but was also one of the experts the documentary consulted to make the list. Doesn't this look stupid? Boom! It's 2017! Okay, so trending gamer awarding coming. Y gee, I freaking wonder who won. Okay, so on my Discord, which is linked in the description by the way, I wrote down my predictions for the Game Awards, both in terms of my primary pick and my secondary pick. So every time a prediction of 
mine came true, I'm gonna do a swish and get me some sweet, sweet good boy points. One point for every primary pick I get right, half a point for every secondary. So since Jeff already revealed Dr. Disrespect won the award in the most clumsy way possible, swish, it's your boy. Dr. Disrespect's speech was good. Not really criticizable without being pedantic, so moving on. If you really focus, you can hear someone saying, what the F word at this trailer. Been telling me thing all day. Vacation simulator. You know, because the humor of Job Simulator wasn't the juxtaposition of a serious environment like work having such goofy results, it was just being a VR game in any location. Okay, so fun fact. As I write this review, I want to make a joke that plays out like, gee, I can't wait for Blank Simulator, Blank being a less funny and suited example than Vacation, but for the life of me, I can't think of what would be a more tone-deaf sequel to Job Simulator's success in humor than its sequel being Vacation Simulator. The natural progression of after you job, then you vacation. It just made sense. And then you run wires that connect them all, and it, again, it, it just works. Doing lots of great stuff, so we can't wait to see what's next from uh, Alchemy. Thank you very much, guys. All right, and now we are going to... No, shut up, Just still talking. <clears throat> and my friend Andrew Renee is backstage hosting the Facebook Winners Lounge. So, uh, who's Andrew Renee? Do you mean Andrea? Andrea and I? Eh, whatever. Simple slip of the tongue. I'm sure the internet will forgive and forget on that one. Jesus, he looks upset. Why does every cut back to Jeff look like he's going through a different stage of grief? Maybe that's why his eyes are dead inside. Best score soundtrack. Okay, I really thought this screen was a one-off thing for the last category, but it looks like it's a consistent title thing. Really cool. Let's hope this happens with every award. Credit where credit is due, y'all. Hey, hey. Got Nier Automata. So that's how you pronounce that. And the winner is Nier Automata. Huh. Well, no good boy points for me. Really thought it was gonna be Cuphead. This guy's video is downright boring. Sucks that you had nothing better to record on than your phone when Jeff asked you to record your own video, huh? At least the plants look nice, as Jeff himself noted. Great greenery in that acceptance speech. Who the hell was talking in the background when Jeff was talking? Anyone hear that? All right, now we've got a first look at the next installment of a major franchise. Oh. Glad to see someone in the dev team worked on Rick and Morty and figured Morty's voice would be improved if his voice were more annoying. Am I the only one that's getting more and more annoyed by these VR meme games? It seems like an excuse to deflect criticism. Like with this game, any criticism of, oh, it's bad, can be met with, yeah, well, that's part of the joke. Even one of the clips was recorded with unregistered Hypercam too. What a meme. The joke needs to have an underlying point or criticism to it, otherwise it just becomes what it's parodying. That's like Poe's Law or something. Like, oh ha ha, it's got excessive swearing and gore and seems really random. What's the punchline? What's the point? I'm so tired of games not bothering to make a genuine effort and taking the easy way out because kids are into memes. Your game is bad and you should feel bad. Justin Roiland implements a lot of fundamentals about improv into his work, so it's interesting to note how bad he is at focus sharing and let his scene partners talk here. I apologized and we- There's Titanfall, but yeah. Oh yeah. More games coming from yeah, you guys, yeah. right? Well, this is pretty cool. Uh, Ruin up some stuff. <laughs> uh, I also want to congratulate some other Game Award winners tonight in a couple other categories. The best mobile game, Monument Valley 2 from us two. Oh my god, no. I don't even care about getting no good boy points for both of these categories. Jeff's doing it again. He's not listing the nominees for some of the awards. Great. Now I know that Resident Evil won best VR, Forza won best sports slash racing game, Metroid Samus's Return won best handheld, and I seriously, Fire Emblem got shafted there, and JX3 HD won best Chinese game, but none of the other nominees. You don't even have to announce them yourself, you lazy piece of turd. Have a title superimposed that lists the nominees like you did for, I don't know, the others? I've been there. That would take like under a minute to create each. So if you at least have one staff member here for this well-funded event, this is inexcusable. That, that was the whole clip? Yeah, me too, Jeff. <clears throat> Good lord, that cellist is getting into it. The electric cello is just slightly ahead of the rest of the orchestra, and that sucks. It sucks because otherwise this was an amazing set. I feel like an old last generation geezer for saying this, but oh man, when that Monkey Island part came on, I had to reach for a towel. What? Seriously? Holy Toledo, this is not a drill. Santa's on the drums. Drum Santa! Drum Santa! I want to thank all the developers from flying in from around the world tonight. Oh, so that's why it looks like you've got a half-decent audience size this year. More categories, more devs, higher attendance. We don't even need to announce their games if they didn't win these extra awards. It's genius. I never really noticed this before, but Jeff's ears kind of make his head look like one of his awards. Random observation. Best narrative. All the nominees are good for this title. Can't wait to see who wins. What remains of Edith Finch? Oh, swish. Half point. Nice top hat, bro. Do you need a map or can you locate the stage today? I don't know where to go. 
glad you said that near the microphone. I would have just stayed on stage until Jeff hauled me away himself, personally. This next game uh, absolutely is gonna take your breath away. When I saw this trailer, I said, we have to make this the first one we show tonight. Uh well, then it kind of sucks that you didn't do that and showed Vacation Simulator before this one, doesn't it? In the Valley of the Gods looks downright beautiful. I can see why Jeff wanted to put this one as a turn setter for the award ceremony. Best action game. Remember that this is different from action adventure game as a category and that Cuphead, Destiny 2, Neo, Prey, and Wolfenstein 2 are not adventure games by any stretch of the definition, so these two aren't ambiguous at all. And the game award goes to, oh man, I have to pay a microtransaction to unlock. That's so. Hey, that's not a bad joke. Good job. Yeah, I said not a bad joke. Can you get over yourself and move on, please? The uh, winner, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Oh, swish. Get bent, everybody who voted for Cuphead. Anyway, we haven't cut to Jeff looking totally unprepared in a while. Can we please fulfill that quota? Oh, perfect. Thank you. I am legitimately happy Rebecca Ford is back. She was such a charismatic addition last year that having her back this year makes me think that the Game Awards does sometimes understand what works. And hey, no big slip up this year. Nicely done. Please welcome Guillermo del Toro and Hideo Kojima. Oh my god, are they serious? Yeah, they are. Oh heck, standing ovation, please. Best art direction. Cuphead 1. No need to draw this out. We, we already know it already. Cuphead 1. Can you imagine the riding if Destiny 2 won this one? Cuphead! Whoa, no one saw this coming. Swish. I could take a cheap shot at these guys and make fun of their stuttering, but when your main job is a dev and not a public speaker, and then you're put in front of thousands of people like this and asked to speak, there isn't any one of us that would be flawless in this. Hell, I'm surprised this is the extent of the stuttering. <clears throat> Well, that was awkward. Presented by Schick Hydro. Oh boy, Schick Hydro. It's coming. Where's the scary razor man? School me how to protect my skin from irritation, daddy. Where's the scary razor man? All I see is Sydney again and her distracting echo effect. All right, if you're getting hungry watching the Game Awards, McDonald's and Uber Eats have teamed up with the show. Like, what the hell? It's really echoey in her parts, but everyone else's mics are fine. Also, I don't care if this was just for an ad. Donating 100 grand to the ESA Foundation to provide scholarships to future game devs was a classy move by Bethesda. Calling it as I see it. This is the story of Carol Shaw. Oh my god. Carol Shaw is this year's industry icon? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Game Awards. Yes. Although the music in the background of this segment keeps skipping. Hey, Game Awards, I'm available if you need to hire people. Sure seems like it. Oh my god, the standing ovation. This is so great. This feels even greater than Kojima's victory. Shaw is such a humble, down-to-earth person. Her speech wasn't the flashiest, but it felt too real. I was giggling along the whole time, and I bet you were too. What in the Sam hell are you wearing? I was joking about needing a translator last year, mostly, but I legitimately can't figure out what this guy is saying half the time. Like, listen to this! Every fighting game at Bandai Namco is created by teams of dedicated people working with a combined focus towards a singular vision. Working together with Harada san I felt a great responsibility. Wow, your English is really good. He kind of sounds like Matthew Broderick. You know, Matthew Broderick with the world's weirdest hype man. Well, why did Jeff just say sorry there? The best role-playing game. Congratulations to the team at Atlas for Persona 5. Swish. Who cares what the other nominees were for best RPG, right? The best strategy game as voted on by the jury and fans. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle from Ubisoft. Well, didn't see that coming at all. Did anyone on your jury play Tooth and Tail? Asking for a friend. The most anticipated game, The Last of Us Part 2. Naughty Dog. Swish. Half point. And the best family game tonight, Super Mario Odyssey. I mean, Swish, but that one was kind of obvious. I didn't even pick a secondary nominee prediction for that one. Finally, our best esports team won last year, win again this year, Cloud9. Congratulations, Jack and Cloud9. Uh, really? Two years in a row? Well, okay, I'll take your word for it. The good news is that the award reveals are not as bad as last year. Psych! They're worse. You don't even have a title card telling us who won. Did you have a lower budget this year? I would have thought not given how many friggin' partners and product placements you have littering up the place. Congratulations, guys. You are men now, or you are women now, or you are whatever gender you self-identify as now. Live your life. I heard a few friends complain that this was shoehorning gender politics into the awards, but eh, doesn't take anything away from it. Could it have been more cleverly woven in? Maybe. Does it actively worsen the Game Awards? Maybe if you're an overly sensitive child that gets offended at every opinion different than yours. Isn't that what some people accuse transgender people of being? Either way, it would have been nice if the career comedian shoehorned some actual humor into her speech. 
Best debut indie game. Nominees are Cuphead, Golf Story, Hollow Knight, Mr. Shifty, and Slime Rancher. Not a bad lineup. Indie peeps need love. Cuphead! Swish! Yeah, baby! Cuphead from Studio MDHR is also the Game Award winner for Best Indie Game. Ah! Oh, you did it again! How are you this incompetent? How are you this incompetent? Four indie titles not getting to see the light of day. It's a good thing you addressed us in the pre-show, Jeff, and told us all that you don't care about presenting indie game nominees. It really shows that you're not stupid, you're just freaking arrogant. <sighs> Sorry. I needed to blow off some steam. I'm fine now, I'm cool. Can we get some technical miscommunication to make me feel better? And... Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna say simply. Cool, thanks. Also, swish. Also, also, not exactly the least scummy move to say, pull out the wallets, but hey, who am I to judge? Chef Hydro salutes the five nominees for the best debut indie game. And we salute you too, Chic Hydro. Long live the freaky Razor Man. <clears throat> Don't let him shake you. Numbers aren't everything. It's really ironic that a trailer from EA is telling me that numbers aren't everything. Like, I know, bro. You know who needs to know that? Whoever's cramming microtransactions into all of your games. It is probably not a coincidence that the Battlefront 2 trailer played when we couldn't hear the audience. Probably to make sure we couldn't hear the booing. He pointed up with his hand, but nothing's up there. Hey, nice title card. I wonder if you could have used title cards for things like games that won offstage awards rather than just showing Donald Mustard's hilarious name. All right, I'm here to present a new award for best ongoing game. And the nominees are... Destiny 2. Oh, we're just announcing them now? No our title card, no our video on the big screen, nothing. And the game award goes to... Overwatch. Swish, half a point. Tonight, they also win best esports game. Swish, another one. And time. Conan's back, and only he can pronounce Mario both correctly and incorrectly in the space of five seconds. If any one of you say this is an intentional joke, I swear to God. This was definitely not intentional, and if it was, it was not funny. Uh. Hey, I wonder if Conan's gonna compare an older video game to the nominees for Game of the Year and say it's way better. Classic. Yahtzee. Eh, close enough. Oh, I know you're all there like, hmm, I can't play it on my screen! <laughs> no, Coca Canana. I was actually here like, why are you here? Uh, oh. Okay, so Conan isn't even announcing a game this year. I guess they realized how pointless he was. Um, our hero is trying to survive against the weather. It's pretty deadly. And against most strategies, uh, against monsters that you've seen. Oh, baby. You know Sebastian, but you'll do. Take the shot. Take the shot. Remember, kids, cars do what women can't. Oh, baby, it's Reggie. Something big's gonna happen. Something big's gonna happen with Reggie. But we're excited to hear more about uh, what Nintendo has in uh, 2018. Thank you. You, you know, Jeff, you, you thought I came all the way up here for only one announcement? Oh, Reggie! I like how Reggie showed off Bayonetta and was all, one more thing, and then it just turns out to be more Bayonetta. <laughs> Best eSports player. Not a surprise that Faker won, but I was surprised at how awkward the fallout was. Check it out. Really glad to see such uh, an honorous award. Last year when I saw a different e player receive this award, I was really jealous of him, and I won one for myself. I this year, I really didn't expect- Even Jeff seemed bummed by how bad that was. As usual, Kojima's game trailer was freaking weird. It'll be impressive if Kojima ever makes sense of all this weirdness, but until then, I- The man is pregnant with a baby that is approving the cameraman! Is this just Kojima fulfilling the weirdness quota after the Razor Man from last year? Okay, so now that we saw the trailer, let's have the lead actor kissing up to Kojima for about a minute solid. The fans want it, the investors want it, Jeff's eagerly watching from the corner looking a bit too interested. We're all having a good time. Why has it become a consistent theme of the Game Awards at some Somebody has to suck up to Kojima. So, what was with the background when Phoenix was performing? Was the guy in charge of the main screen just browsing porn while the set was going on and forgot it was being projected? Also, I had to Google Game Awards Music Acts and then browse the Game Awards site for past news to even find out these guys were named Phoenix, because Jason Schwartzman sure made it sound like the band was named Felix. Ti amo. Say Phoenix! Please welcome a YouTube supernova and one of the stars of Horizon Zero Dawn and Destiny 2. Here are I Justine and Lance Reddick. Whoa, Supernova, huh? That's high price. Let's just pop on over to a YouTube and uh, four million subscribers, not bad. And like four videos from a past 20 broke a million views. So a subscriber view ratio of less than 25%. And she can't even use the excuse that she uploads daily. Good, Supernova. Best student game. Easily the best addition to the Game Awards this year. Super impressed with all the nominees, and I would be remiss in my duties not to show all of the nominees in this very review.
Level Squared. Thank you uh, very much for uh, actually creating this category. There's a lot of great student uh, games uh, that are being made. Just look at the other nominees uh, in the category. Um, who left the vacuum on while this guy was talking? Also, Aussie represent. Also, also, props to this guy for making the best joke this year at the end of his speech. Uh, I'm graduating in a week. Somebody hire me, please. <laughs> Oh my god, isn't it crazy? He didn't even acknowledge that it was a joke afterwards and look at the crowd awkwardly. Oh my god. Alright, here's what probably most of you are here for. If you ever wanted to meet the gaming industry's answer to Tommy Wiseau, the Game Awards have you covered. I'm like the fifth or six hundredth person to say this, but yeah. We're here, we're serving this. Look, the Oscars should fuck themselves up. This is the shit. I'm telling you, this is, this is the real shit. What is this? Is this that, uh, interactive gaming! Same off-the-wall arrogant attitude, same hair, even the same accent. The resemblance is uncanny. Okay, can you swear here? Can, can you swear? swear? Okay. Fuck the Oscars, you know? I know you probably want me to make some silly comment about how crazy it is, or talk about how this isn't professional or whatever, but I'm just having a blast watching Jeff have an inner battle with himself. It's not even about Tommy at this point, it's about Jeff. I'm just looking at Jeff and laughing at just his, Oh god, no. One side knows he doesn't like this and needs it to stop, but the other knows he's on camera and can't be seen losing his cool. Pick a side, Jeff. Go ahead. I'm a little bit jet lagged, so that's excited. why I'm a bit. Uh, and Sorry. I'm excited. So this is my idea. It doesn't have anything with the EA shit going on, yeah. with the loot box and stuff. Okay. No. EA has been very good to me. Yes. And, and uh, to be honest with you, they're getting. Because it's nice to hate EA, blah, blah. I don't care about that shit. What I'm saying is this all publishers fuck up sometimes, you know? Yeah. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. They fuck up. Okay, Tommy's spitting some truth in this incomprehensible mess, and I'm sure the rest of it will be calm and collected. This is, uh, this is my time to shine, man. You know how proud I am to be able to see the shit. You flew I'm, a long way. I know like, you did. This yeah. is fun. All right. It's fun. Just a I love this. Come on. But if you keep talking, we're not gonna be able to get yeah, to the yeah, game. Oh, oh. Hey, come on, Jeff. Give him a break. He's jet lagged. It's moments like these that you gotta feel bad for Jeff for putting up with a lot of stuff. Like Tommy Wiseau said with EA, he's not inherently bad, he just screws up sometimes. Like accidentally deciding indie games aren't worth your time as much as advertisements. <clears throat> I'm a little confused because I didn't see one particular game get mentioned, all right? And of course I'm talking about the game that plays you. That's right. We're talking about Yahtzee. Hey look, the second Yahtzee joke of the night, and it was just as funny the second time. Games for Impact. And, uh, why are they just saying the nominees again instead of showing them on a screen? Especially considering half the crowd probably has never heard of Bury Me My Love or Please Knock On My Door before. And the game award goes to... Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Swish! And apparently it won Best Audio Design too. What a confusing category that was. How does it feel to be nominated and be here at the Game Awards? 어, 저뿐만 아니라 저희 PUBG 팀 모두에게 아마 의미 있는 순간인 것 같습니다. This is a monumental moment for myself. Okay, to me it's super interesting how the creator of PUBG needed a translator for what he was saying, but the translator didn't need to ask him the question in his native language. Kinda seems like either this event is heavily scripted, minus the Tommy Wiseau part obviously, or this guy knows English fully well and can't be bothered. I realize it's probably the first one, but I like to imagine that the latter is true. I feel so strongly about this because when the translator said only half of the stuff that this guy said, CH is actually the first one to make the motion that he's not done talking. Best performance as announced by Golem. And honestly, even though I was cheering for Ashley Birch again this year, Melina, oh boy, Dragons definitely deserve this award too. Especially considering... I'm actually a Ninja Theory's video editor. I'm not an actress at all. Wow. I just want to know how you got this voice role then. Good to know that if I keep up my video editing, I can still land that dream job in voiceover work. Um, hey guys, uh, wrong text slide. <laughs> It's open! Here's your McDonald's. Ah, woo! I really enjoyed this ad for Uber Eats McDonald's because it basically is encouraging its audience to be a bunch of antisocial rudeniks. It's unfortunate that this young man wasn't able to rightfully applaud when Ed Boon was announced on stage because he was too busy tearing the jugular off of some poor innocent showgar behind him. When you're developing a game, the only limits you have are tools, technology, your team, budgets, E3. <laughs> I didn't think that could go over that well. What is it with these guys at the Game Awards making remarks about the jokes that they made right after they made the jokes? I swear to god, every dry corporate suit on stage tonight thinks that they invented humor. The only people who seem to appropriately respond to an audience's laughter is Carol Shaw and Tommy Wiseau. What an odd pairing. Best Game Direction. And the Game Award goes to... Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Aw, oh, dang. I don't get any good boy points for this one. Tonight, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild also wins the Game Award for Best Action Adventure Game. Oh, okay. Never mind. Swish! 
Why do you keep going up there? What are you hoping to find? Each time you go out there, I wonder if you'll ever return. The woman in this trailer sounds extremely bored. Exodus itself looks great, but this woman seems like she doesn't have her heart in it. Maybe she's inexperienced, but that didn't seem to slow down Melinda. Hey Frank, how's the camera doing? Oh come on Nintendo, other people are performing. Don't be texting. Show this crowd at least a bit more respect than you do for YouTubers. It's time for the final offer. A brand new 34 inch LG widescreen monitor for almost half off. Someone's super excited about savings. Oh baby, game of the year and hard cut to Jeff looking bored. My God, your camera people are just stellar. Okay, here we go, game of the year. And hey, instead of the regular video introducing the nominees, the Game Awards Orchestra is playing the soundtracks from each nominee to footage of each game. I can dig it, it's an awesome idea. Oh, that's neat, the choir is wearing hats that... Wait, they're not singing. Some audience members were just given hats, I get... Everybody is wearing these hats! This moment legitimately scared me. It was like watching They Live for the first time. It was like the music turned everyone into Super Mario Odyssey zombies. And let's face it, Nintendo already did that to their audience a month or so ago. Also, Odyssey sure took a lot of the space out of these nominations. How much do you want to bet it didn't win? After all, if they did, putting this piece after they made their speech would have been more impactful. All of the nominees are great in their own right, with the exception of PUBG, which has issues it needs to iron out. Aside from that, I would be totally cool with any of these guys winning. I don't really have a qualm about it being an early access, because it's still a game, and they still said, here is a product to it that we give to you, so it deserves to be judged on the other merits of the other games. But as well, early access isn't a shield you can hide behind. If you put it on the Steam store, it's a game. It's out there. It deserves to be judged on its own merits. Not the merits of an early access game. Anyway, enough teasing. Won. I mean, as I write this review, I haven't yet been informed who won, and I haven't seen this clip, I've hit pause on it, but I'm gonna say it's pretty obvious Legend of Zelda won. Jeff says something different, I'll be very legitimately surprised, and I'll talk about that for a bit. So here goes. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Eh, well, there was a reason I was so confident in it. At least the most anticipated game win last year didn't go to their heads. Their ending speech was downright cute. I like that they didn't have any sort of big impactful emotional speech, but just a small speech that boiled down to, we're so happy, thank you. Maybe if they knew they'd won this, they wouldn't be texting earlier. Anyway, Jeff ended the night pretty quickly thereafter, probably because Tommy Wiseau took up so much time. And more importantly, my most important prediction turned out to be right, Swisherina. <clears throat> Overall, this year was okay. Normally my scripts for the Game Awards span about nine pages, and this year we barely filled up seven minus the beginning sketch, so I'm kind of torn. On the one hand, it's kind of nice that something that was initially... Well, initially bad turned into something presentable. On the other hand, now the Game Awards feel less like a scene that everyone wants to point and laugh at and more of a meh awards ceremony. Its quirky incompetence was the source of its charm, at least this channel, so... Cue the piano music. This may be the last Game Awards video I do. Wow, holy Toledo, you made three videos on this and this'll be your last. Is that what you're saying, Tweed? So many tens of people are gonna be disappointed. Yeah, point taken, Mr. Strawman. I just feel like now that the Game Awards has gotten into a groove, tearing it apart feels more like a pedantic exercise in being bitter than sharing a laugh at something bad. Plus, at this point, it's mostly an ad machine. And even watching a critique of that can get daunting. Who knows, the Game Awards next year may be such a misfire that I end up doing a video anyway, but for now, I've got to acknowledge that the Game Awards is getting decent. Last year, I told them to remove the cringe, and they did. Now I'm wondering if I even wanted that in the first place. It'll be something to consider. And for those of you who genuinely like these styled videos and don't want this yearly stuff to go away, don't worry. You haven't seen the last of Tweed in 2017, I promise you that. <laughs> the, the, the mystery, the intrigue! And that's a wrap. Hey, hi, hello! Thank you for tuning into this whole video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm already hard at work on my next video, and it should be up before the new year. I hope you enjoyed it. I only have uh, 20 seconds on these new title card thingy things, so I'll see you next time. Go click the things if you enjoy my content. Subscribe to me. Smell my candle. Goodbye!